Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out Gunpla Kun DX set. So this is probably the weirdest version of a model kit of the RX-782 that I've ever seen. I know some of you guys, you know, say you get tired of the RX-782 all the time. I understand, but this one should be pretty unique. I mean, just take a look at that. This one is the Gunpla Kun DX set that includes the with runner version recreation parts. So you can either make it as like the built model kit like that, or you can make it so that like how it looks on the runner there, as you can kind of see there on the boxer. So we'll talk some more about that. This is also a kit that's made with Limex and we'll talk some more about that. Let's go ahead and just get right into it. So we've got some adorable box art here on the front of Gunpla Kun and there you can see it in the runner version recreation parts right there. So that's kind of an illustration of what that's going to look like. So I love the fact that the box art is styled sort of like an HGUC box and you have like all these boxes. I think those are different versions of, let's see, yeah, those are all different HD versions of the RX-782 there in the background. So that's pretty cool. And going here on the side of the box, again, very HGUC styled here, but no numbering or anything on there. On this side, a bit more about the DX set. So here's how you can build it. It says you can either build it as the normal version, which would be like that, or as the runner version, which would be like that. And it should be interesting to see how we build it. Because if you look over here, here you can see the runners and you can see this that they're in specially colored Limex, but you can see what the runners look like. And this runner right here is not what is on there. Or is that that one? No, I don't think so. Anyway, so it looks like we have a special runner that is made for displaying it like that if you want to. So anyway, so you can use the display base to recreate Gunpla Kun runner version. So it'll just stand up like that and look like this on the runner, which I think is pretty cool. I might opt, opt for that option here, but you can also make it as the normal version. And this is showing the unpainted state. So we're here a little bit more about uh, the Limex and it says right here, that there might be white sections on the colored parts from the limestone materials. This is a sign that the kit is friendly to the environment. So thank you for understanding. So just saying that if you, in your, like your colored sections, if you have some little white kind of remnants there, it's just from the Limex. So Limex is a new material made in Japan that uses limestone as its main material. It can be used as a substitute for plastic, helping to reduce the amount of petroleum derived resin used in plastics, Limex is gaining considerable attention both at home in Japan and abroad as an eco-conscious material that also helps reduce CO2 emissions. So cool. On the other side of the box, not really too much else to see there. This is Ecopla, just because it's made of their Limex material. So let's go ahead and pop it open. And one of the things that I like about this is that the colors are in a more kind of pastel-y kind of shade. And even the white has like a different look to it. I mean, I can immediately recognize that has kind of a different sheen to it. I'm guessing that's because it's that Limex material. This is the first time I'm building anything that's made out of their Limex material. So here for the manual on the front, we've got our parts list right there and the illustration from the box art on the back side. Nothing there. It looks like this is just going to be a single paper that folds out. On the inside here, instructions for how to build it as the normal version or how to display it as the runner version. On the color side, here's just putting together a couple of the parts that have and a more complex parts like the head and the body, whereas the arms and legs I think are very simple as like, like the leg that you can see, it's only just the two parts and the arm I think is just a single part each. So all right, yeah, getting into the runners here, this is runner G1 and I can tell it's definitely a different feel for the plastic. It's a much softer feeling to it and it feels very different. And you can see it has this really nice satin finish, which looks really good. So it kind of, it makes it look like it already has like a really nice coat of matte coat on it, which is really nice and convenient. As you can see, a couple of the parts already fell off the runner. So uh, this is going to be of the type, I forget what they're called. I think they're called, there's like a zero something gate, uh, just where, oh, it's a zero touch gate, something like that, a touch gate. I think it's just what it's called actually. So the touch gates, like what you see on like uh, SD kits where you're meant to just be able to pop the parts off the runner without using any tools. So it definitely seems to be the case with this. Although some of these, it looks like you might want to use a tool for, but yeah, it's interesting. The plastic has a very different feel to it. So there was runner G1 there. You saw with the white and yellow and red parts here on runner G2. Here we've got the display base and some more of the white parts, some more of the red parts and our blue parts on here as well. And then here on this A runner, this is interesting. So this is the A runner and then this also has the G runner inside of it. So that G runner inside there, that's your display runner. So you'll actually cut this runner out of the actual runner. And then I guess you have to like build the parts. So the parts will fit on here in a way. So it's it's cool. You can actually 
build it as the runner version and then you don't have to keep it like that. You can actually swap between having it as like the normal version and the uh, runner version because all the runner, for the runner version, all the parts just like fit onto here, which is quite interesting. Yeah, and I just can't get over how different this feels. It has such a different feeling to it for just from normal Bandai plastic. It's very interesting. All right, we do also have a sticker here, which is just going to be for the black around the eyes and that's going to be it. So let me go ahead and get this put together and let's see how it looks. And here is Gumpla Kun all built up. I mean, the head looks awesome. I love the head. The body is super weird just being like this little box of a body and these teeny little mini arms and legs on it. It's very weird. I mean, that's the whole kind of draw of it, right? It's supposed to be kind of goofy and silly looking. But I do really like the design of the head, I will say. It'd be interesting to put this head onto just a regular SD kit. And I think actually now that I mentioned that, I have seen people do that, making a custom build like with the SDCS uh, cross silhouette ARC-782 kit's body and then putting this head onto it. It actually does look really cool. But just for a size comparison here for you guys, here it is compared with a 144 scale. Gundam, so it is going to be kind of generally about the size of a standard SD, but the body is going to be quite small. And I'll tell you guys, one thing that's really interesting about this is the plastic. As I mentioned, the plastic is noticeably different and it's going to be really hard to kind of just show you guys through this medium, just like through the video. With touching it, you can definitely feel that it feels different. And also cutting it, it feels like it's going to be much less forgiving than kind of standard plastic. So you are going to want to be careful uh, cutting this, sanding it, filing it, anything like that. And you can see as it warned on the box about like miscoloration, it's going to be kind of difficult to see, but I noticed it, especially like on some of the red parts, there was a little bit of miscoloration. I think if you look right under there, you can see like a little bit of like the white kind of staining in the red. That's not like a stress mark or anything. That's just the plastic uh, color is just a little bit not right just because of the way that the Limex is molded. So anyway, pretty cool design here. The sticker going around the eyes is unfortunate that that was not a separate piece as it is kind of obviously a sticker, though from a distance it does look nice and it gives you that nice definition around the eyes. The color separation on the head here is nice. I like that it's the red part that goes through like to the side of the vents because you can almost like see it because of the nature of the plastic. It's very slightly somewhat translucent, so you can actually kind of see like this kind of reddish tone underneath like the entire face here of the Gundam because that red part is going through here on the front and on the sides to the vents there on the side of the head and everything. But looks pretty cool. You have a seam line down the back and through the top of the head. Basically from right here, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but you can see like the front part of the face is one piece and the back half of the head is two halves. So you have a seam line right there. I don't think that just your standard uh, polystyrene cement would work at all on this. So I'm not sure even how you would go about uh, removing the seam line on that. Probably you would just have to use super glue and sand it. Kind of would have been nice if we would have had a sticker uh, for the back head camera there as well. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the, well, I guess we can talk about the articulation of it. It's going to be pretty minimum here. The head is on a ball joint, so it will move up and down a little bit, turn. And that's basically it. The arms are on just a peg, so those can also rotate up to the front and down, but I'm even just rotating that, I'm feeling worried that that's gonna break in some way, so I wouldn't move it around too much. The legs are also on little ball joints, so you can kind of move those little tiny things around a little bit, but it's just gonna be pretty basic movement here for this. And you can see there is a hole there underneath to plug this onto an action base, if you wanted to have this flying on an action base or something. For the accessories, the shield is just a single red piece, and you can really see some of that miscoloration here on the shield. So again, that's not a stress mark, that's just miscoloration in the plastic. But this will just clip onto the side of the arm. It actually clips like at the elbow joint there, but it will just be on the side of the arm there like that. The beam saber, which is just kind of a, a little white stick essentially, not really gonna mess around with that. The beam rifle, again, also has some miscoloration there on it, but it's just this single blue piece that will fit into the hand and you won't be able to hold that straight down in a standing pose. As you can see, it goes down too far, so you will have to have it out slightly so that it can be standing on the ground and the beam rifle is not going to be in the way. And we do have the included stand here, it's just a flat white plate with this little thing on it. Plugging it onto there actually doesn't have, doesn't keep the Gundam up in the air, it just keeps it like at a standing pose and it's just not going to fall over basically, it's just a support for it so you can have it just standing there and it's not going to fall over because with these teeny tiny little legs and feet attached onto teeny little ball joints on there and it being obviously very top heavy, the stand is just going to help to help it to stand up. But then we've also got our stand here for displaying this as the runner version so you can kind of see how the head will fit onto there and how the other like the arms will fit up here and the legs will fit down onto there. 
Uh, some of the accessories like the beam rifle and the shield I think fit onto this back part right there and this just hold the stand part just kind of holds the runner up at a bit of an angle so that you can display the kit in that way so let's take a look at the kit in a number of different poses i guess as much as you could call it poses for this kit it doesn't really do a whole lot and it's not really meant to so, i mean you, this is not the kind of kit that you would buy uh, with the idea in mind to have like a bunch of different cool action poses and things that you can do with it. I mean, this is very much just like a novelty kit that you would get just as a little display. I mean, there's certainly things you can do with it. Like I mentioned before, kit bashing it, using the head from this kit on a different SD kit or something like that, I think could definitely be cool. And with this kit being relatively cheap, it would be cool to maybe get a couple of them, maybe one to display as the runner mode, one to display as like the regular Gundam mode, and then another one to use for kit bashing, something like that. But it's cool to see something different like this from Bandai for a change you know we build all of our standard Gundam models all the time so this one is just something really unique and fun just for if you're a fan of Gundam or just if you're like a collector of different Gunpla stuff this is a really nice item to have for any fans of the ARC-72 or just kind of Gundam in general so I think it's a pretty fun little kit what do you guys think about this if you're interested in checking it out or anything else from Bandai of course you can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam store Got all sorts of different cool Gundam stuff there for you guys and if you would also like like to like and or subscribe while you're here would greatly appreciate it and let me know your thoughts on this what do you think about it the limex is also really interesting that's kind of one of the things just the actual material of it it's quite interesting for me although like i said with my experience with this and it being a little bit more difficult to work with it's not necessarily a material that i hope bandai will use more it's cool that they're trying to you know be a little bit more eco-friendly and not use so much plastic but from a modeling perspective it, it, it seems to me that it's not going to be as easy to work with so hopefully they'll just stick with the normal polystyrene for the most part for the time being and we'll see kind of what they're able to to uh, come up with in the future but that's gonna be it for today guys thanks so much for checking out the video i'll see y'all in the next one bye